Haggards, the young men and women, the wise and the foolish, the rich and the poor, the megastar and the rickshaw puller. If each one of them were to be asked, What do you really want? What would they say? All would give a certain reply, the same reply invariably. What do men seek? What have they been running madly after through the ages, through births and rebirths? What is that treasure, the greatest of treasures that everyone is hankering after? It is bliss, unalloyed joy. The external pleasure is temporal. It is short-lived. But there is bliss inside, there is bliss inside the spirit of man. From bliss is life born, it exists in bliss and in the end it returns to bliss. As Wordsworth has put it, trailing clouds of glory do we come from God who is our home. God is full of infinite bliss. Until we get a pinch of this celestial bliss, there is no genuine happiness. Wittingly or unwittingly, everybody is eager for the same bliss. How does one get that pure bliss unblemished by worries and tensions? The result one obtains in Satya Yoga by meditating is obtainable in Treta Yoga by performing sacrifices. In Kali Yuga, however, the same result is obtained by doing Nam Kirtan of Sri Bhagavan Hari. The result one obtains in Satya Yuga by meditation, in Treta Yuga by Yajna, in Dwapar Yuga by service is obtainable in Kali Yuga by only doing Hari Kirtan. 
and this result is the great bliss hankered after by all to get sri bhagwan full of infinite bliss one has to take recourse to naam kirtan in kali yuga many sages and saints through the ages have sung the glory of naam sankirtan in unequivocal terms however the best champion of hari naam sankirtan in this age is undoubtedly shri bhagwan chaitanya mahaprabhu of navadvipa श्री भगवान राम कृष्ण देव द ग्रेट इनकारनेशन ऑफ द टाइम हैज ऑल्सो एम्फेसाइज ऑन नाम संकीर्तन विद ब्रिलियंट इलस्ट्रेशन देन केम द ग्रेटेस्ट अपोस्ट ऑफ हरि नाम संकीर्तन श्री भगवान सीता राम दास ओंकारनाथ with direct command from lord jagannath of puri dham to preach the naam he set out on this mission whole heartedly not only sri naam sankirtan he also gave emphasis on pranam if naam sankirtan is the main food pranam is the main drink again If Nam Sankirtan is the best medicine, Pranam is the accompanying fruit. To get spiritual pleasure or to gain material prosperity, to get out of the daily tension or to steer clear amid the great threat of the nuclear weapon, the chanting of the name is the only refuge. A holy child was born. on 17th february 1892 in the village kyauta on the bank of ganga in hugli west bengal india at the time of birth the child's astrologer maternal great grandfather late pran krishna bandopadhyay said after casting the horoscope look here a great man mahapurusha has come blow the conch shell wherever this child will go annadan that is charitable supply of food on a vast scale will follow him it is here that sitaram when only a tiny tot sank into deep samadhi listening to the chanting of naam while on the lap of his mother it is verily here that he developed a close friendship in the primary school of prasann guru mahashaya with vibhuti bhushan bandopadhyay the greatest novelist of bengal and a writer of pather panchali which was pictureized by the universally celebrated director satyajit ray his paternal house was in dumurdaho Hugli near Triveni Tirtha namely Brajanath Niketan the family deity being Brajanath Radha Rani the name of his father was Pranahari Chattopadhyay a very popular doctor by profession his mother was Malyavati Devi an elder brother a great rural poet of the time Bankim Chandra Chattopadhyay a room in a house in that village 
Brajanath Niketan Year 1897 A six-year child, Prabhu Chandra, was lying in the same bed with his father, Pranhari. Pointing his finger towards a big window in the south, the child said, Father, see, Shiva is standing over there. That Prabhu Chandra Chattopadhyay turned into Sitaram later in his life. And his mission since then, from the age of six, was to awaken the sleeping man and show him, pointing his finger, Look, there is Shiva. On 7th January 1918, at 12 in the midnight, a young man of 26, a resident pupil at Vishwanath Chatushpati, a school of oriental learning, Chinsura, in meditation, was sitting in Badhapadmasan while everyone else was asleep. He changed his posture, sat normal, and began to meditate again with his eyes closed and mind fixed on the heart. Who should he see now but God Shiva, five-faced, trident in one hand and tabo in another. Param Guru Dashrati Dev of the village Dikshui was a distinguished Sanskrit scholar and a poet. He was a great devotee as well as yogi. Sri Sri Thakur so rightly selected him as his Shiksha Guru as well as Diksha Guru. In the same year, 1918 that is, in Dikshui, his Guru Pita, on the night of Saraswati Puja, the day of worship of the Goddess of Learning, he had a vision of his previous birth. He was a world revered saint devoted to the Mother. He could scarcely believe it and exclaimed, O oh Mother, you have not granted me leave even in this life. The omniscient Guru said after hearing it all, Go your way, everything is alright. The daughter-in-law, Putra Badhu of Param Guru Dashrati Dev Yogeshwara, along with her elder son and daughter-in-law, are seen in this picture in the study within which Thakur had this vision. Here is a temple of the family deity Gopalji, who has a very glorious and glamorous history of his most compassionate temperament and a very naughty disposition. Here was the Sanskrit college established by Sri Sri Dashrath Dev Yogeshwara. Here is another site, the kitchen of the house. It was here in this premises that Sri Sri Thakur showed the Holy Trinity, Sri Sri Dashrath Dev, his Guru, Hemangini Devi, Guru Ma and Kamlama, his wife, their favorite deity, Ishta Devata. Wonderstruck, by the revelation, the great Guru asked his disciple, Are you my Guru or disciple? I don't know this, but I know with certainty that you are mine and I am yours. If you are the Guru, I am your disciple. I take refuge with you. Instruct me and achieve my deliverance. And if I am your Guru, then tell me who are you? Of what stuff are you made? Dikshui, here we see the historical temple of Sri Ram Sitaji, Lakshmanji and Hanumanji with the 125 crore of Ram Nam writing within the temple Almira. The Radha Krishna temple is equally famous. Here, under a sacred banyan tree, amidst exquisite natural beauty, is a lonely spot the seat of the village deity, Vasantaburi. This is where Param Guru Dashrati Dev Yogeshwara would pass hours in Samadhi peacefully. Brajanath Niketan, Dumurdaho. This is the most sacred room, a room of much historical significance in Dumurdaho Hugli, within which on the night of Dol Purnima, the truth about 
who he was and his mission had dawned upon Sri Sri Thakur. A silent voice welled up from within declaring his total fulfillment, Purna Prapti. Yada 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 Hitharmasya Lala Nirbhavadur Whenever religion declines and irreligion prevails, O Arjuna, I am sure to incarnate myself. But most astoundingly, Sri Thakur came down from the status of incarnation to the status of an ordinary spiritual seeker as a part of his divine play. The monarch forgot his own identity and took on the garb of a destitute. In fact, Sri Sri Thakur began his spiritual life anew. He started carrying on Japa, meditation, worship and the study of scriptures in right earnest. The family boundary was now a bondage to him. His search for seclusion brought him to the nearby Kali temple and the Shiva temple for lone spiritual sittings. No, not even here. He was frantically looking for a much more desolate corner and here he discovered it in the jungle of Mahabir Garden, now renamed as Mahabir Niketan. No, no, his heart and soul yearned for more and more seclusion and sacredness combined. And now behold, here one could have it all and more beyond expectation. This was the place just on the bank of Ganges, only five minutes walk from his paternal home. The grand Sadhan Kshetra site for meditation, Sri Ram Ashram, the first ashram established by Sri Sri Thakur, was inaugurated by his Guru Deva, Sri Sri Dashrati Dev. Here, in the year 1928, commenced his day and night meditation. There was nothing but samadhi, off and on, with a little break for meager fruit snack once a day, if at all necessary, which was passed through a little hole into his room. Not even a month had passed when he heard the sound of the bells, cymbal, flute and finally Hare Krishna Mantra in many celestial voices accompanied by many wonderful instruments. And it is here that he received the very first command from the Divine. You are a saint. Do take a plunge for the welfare of humanity. It is only a divine voice from within, reverberating ceaselessly to his great wonder. No, I am not going to pay any heed to your word because you are only a voice. If you have any command, do please meet me face to face in your divine form and dictate. This was the spontaneous reaction of Sri Sri Thakur. He went again into deep sadhana and swadhyaya, puja and path, without neglecting his family duties, except during the rare experience of total oblivion. This is Uttamashram, a well-known mutt in the Shankaracharya line. Sri Sri Dhuanandagiri was the second Acharya of the mutt and the most respected to Sri Sri Thakur and his Sampradaya because it is Dhruvanandaji Maharaj who conferred the Brahmacharya Bahirvas as well as the name Omkarnath on Sri Sri Thakur. He is also the Nyani Guru of Sri Sri Thakur and Diksha Guru of his elder brother Bankim Chandra and his wife Saryu Wala. Between his spiritual sittings, whenever there was leisure, he would write spiritual literature. The content of this unique literature was the outcome of his deep study as well as intensive meditation. 
Here you see the Panchavati. A Panchavati is a set of five sacred trees. This Panchavati was planted by Sri Sri Thakur himself. Of the five sacred trees, two are now visible. Under this Panchavati, Sri Sri Thakur wrote the most important of his spiritual literature, namely Streams of Nectar, Tapas Habib, the drama on Islam Dharma. Sri Sri Namamrit Lahari, Katha Ramayana, Milan Yadnya, Bijane Bijoya, and above all his historical commentary on Gita, Pranap Piyush Bhashya, in which the theory of Omkar has been expressed and established. In the last quarter of his life, Sri Sri Thakur fulfilled his long cherished dream of installing the Ram, Sita, Lakshman, and Mahabir idol within the newly constructed beautiful temple along with 125 crores of Sri Ram Nam writing the grand offerings of his near and dear devotees and disciples. In spite of great reluctance at the command of his guru Sri Sri Dasharthi Devi Yogeshwara, Sri Sri Thakur married Sri Sri Siddheshwari, daughter of Thakur Charan Bhattacharya of Dikshoi. Siddheshwari, then a mere child of six, knew Prabodh Chandra as a student at the Dikshoi Chatushpathi. At a function, she had pointed at Prabodh Chandra and told her mother that she would rather die than marry anyone other than Prabodh Chandra. This is Milan Mandir. This was the name chosen for this place because this is where Siddheshwari first saw Prabhu Chandra. She selected him as her husband at first sight. Finally, when she came to know that Sitaram's health was not too well, the girl declared in a firm voice, The grace of Mother Siddheshwari is upon you. You will not die. I will worship the deity for you. Mother Siddheshwari is the name of Kali Mata, whose temple is nearby in the village Pakri. Sri Sri Thakur's consort Sri Sri Siddheshwari was named after Jagan Mata Siddheshwari Kali. Renamed as Kamala, when she became a member of Prajanath Niketan, she began to learn the discipline of family life. She dedicated her life to her idealistic husband and was quite detached from worldly matters. Either command me directly, face to face, as to what I have to do, or I shall destroy this body in Nirvikalp Samadhi, the highest stage of trance from which there is no return. Sri Sri Thakur had stated this to God, asking for a direct mandate to do God's work. Here, in Leela Kunja Jagannath Puri, he went into rigorous sadhana on 12th April 1937. On the night of 24th April 1937, while he was in Samadhi, Jagannath Dev appeared holding the flute, aureoled in transcendental light, accompanied with sweet sound of the bell, saying, Go, go and give the Naam. He disappeared. From the next day onwards, the preaching of Naam started in Puri. Later on, he established the Nilachal Ashram Puri, the headquarter of Orissa branch, and a great pilgrimage spot. This is the famous Give the Name function, which is held every year on the 10th Vaishak of the Bengali calendar. Here are excellent snapshots of the function, in which two great sannyasis of the Sangha, Srimad Tidandi Swami Madhav Ramana Jur, Acharya Akhil Bharat Jai Guru Sampraday and Sri Matridandi Swami Parankush Ramana Jur Acharya Umkar Sevak Sangha are delivering brilliant spiritual discourses on Sri Sri Thakur to the extreme delight of the audience. Professor Parashar Chattupadhyay, Sri Sri Thakur's beloved Gopalji, President of All India Yuvak Sangha, is lecturing on Sri Sri Thakur's divine life on the same occasion. He is reading out from a Bhaiwani 
fear not. He was indeed the source of extreme delight and inspiration to the spellbound audience. Listen to Sitaram's ambrosial message. The Nama is superior even to the milk of paradise. The man who drinks the name Elixir becomes free from the thought of this material world and the world hereafter. He floats constantly in the sea of joy, saturated in the spring of perfect love. He remains in the world, though not belonging to the world. For him, every particle of the universe becomes a manifestation of God. He sees God, savors God, hears God, and speaks God. Nothing except God does preoccupy him. Then began Chaturmasya, Akhandanam, and Annadan at Bhavanipur, Calcutta, Puri, Dumurdaho, Dikshui, Katak, Bankura, Burdwan, one after another every year. The inhabitants of Guntur, Andhra Pradesh were flooded with the stream of Nam for some time. Ram Nam Kshetra was a big establishment. It was flooded with the tide of Sita Ram's love. The sevaks of that place simply took refuge in it. There was a heretofore unheard of commotion for the preaching of Nam was conducted in different parts of the country, Madhya Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Rajasthan, East Bengal, Dwarka, South India, and so on. The compassion of Nam was distributed in the houses and streets of Kolkata. After this, for the next 45 years, much social work went on in all corners of India. Temples were established among them Temples incorporating 125 crores of handwritten Ramnam. Dilapidated temples were renovated. Programs for feeding the poor and distribution of clothes were held. Help was extended to the fathers of marriageable daughters. The responsibility of lifetime maintenance of hundreds of poverty stricken families was undertaken. Free schools for poor students were set up. 29 Akhandanam Kirtan centers were set up across India. Several other activities of the kind were carried on simultaneously. The divine life of Umkarnath ran on two parallel straight lines. One, rigorous sadhana combined with swadhyaya and the other, complete dedication to the spiritual and material welfare of ailing humanity. Here is some Karmat. This is one of the chief holy places and 12 Jyotirlinga spots of India. It is situated on the bank of the holy river Narmada. This mat was established by Thakur in the year 1953 and it was his most favored place for sadhana in seclusion. His 20 months long sadhana at a stretch in the cave of Omkareshwar between 1955 and 57 was a landmark in spiritual history. Sri Sri Thakur wrote some of the most invaluable spiritual treatises under the bilva tree, namely Sri Sri Nad Liramrit, Sri Sri Narmada Mahimamrit, Ujjivan, Udbodhan, Matrigatha, etc. In later years, he installed the image of Omkar, the supreme of all the deities, and the cream of the Omkarma philosophy. This Omkar Vigraha is being worshipped till today at the Omkar Mat. A guest house has been built recently at the Mat to accommodate the Satak disciples and devotees of Sri Sri Thakur. Many devotees from different countries aspiring to find mental peace and spiritual bliss come to Omkar Mat. It is a matter of great joy that a spacious guest house along with Santa Nivas, a Sanskrit school, and a charitable dispensary is going to be constructed in the near future. A very attractive spot for pilgrimage is the Pushkar Lake in Ajmer, Rajasthan. 
Sri Sri Thakur performed two important Chaturmasya Vratas in the year 1964 and 1967 here. Many members of the royal families of Rajasthan became his ardent devotees. So also innumerable common folk from different walks of life. Ganga Sagar is the only pilgrimage spot in West Bengal which attracts lakhs of devotees from all over India. This happens especially on Makar Sankranti Mela during the month of January. Sri Sri Thakur declared and established Ganga Sagar as Nitya Tirtha, a pilgrimage place for all the year round. Sri Sri Thakur's selections of sites for much were apt. These sites abounded in serene and spiritual beauty. The site of Yogendra Math of Ganga Sagar is one such example among many. Devotees from all over the world visit Yogendra Math all the year round. Sri Sri Lakshmi Narayan Vigraha here is worshipped daily. Here, Akhand Hari Sankirtan, the unbroken chanting of Nam, day in and day out, is carried on. This has proved to be one of the chief attractions of this place. A guest house is under construction. This work is being overseen and guided ably by the ashram in charge, Kinkar Sadhan Bhai. Bhadreshwar Jai Guru Mat lies just on the banks of the Ganges. The surrounding natural scenery is uplifting. The Vigraha of Lakshmi Narayanaji has been installed here. The Durga Puja ceremony and Sri Sri Thakur's Janmashtami Utsav, the birthday celebrations, are the main functions of the ashram. Ganga Ashram, Chandan Nagar Hugli, is also on the Ganges. It was established by Sri Sri Thakur Omkarnath in the year 1973. Herein has been installed the image of Ganga Devi in honor of the Hola. In Uttar Pradesh, in the city of Kanpur is a Laukush Ashram. Bithur is very famous as a pilgrimage spot. This is the grand temple of Laukush with Sri Sri Sitama, Sri Sri Radha Govinda, Sri Sri Haraparvati, and Ram, Sita, Lakshman, Mahabir, and above all, Sri Guru Omkarnath at the very entrance of the ashram. There is the Omkar Dindayal Charitable Dispensary, which is remarkable for its humanitarian activities. There is the guest house not far from the ashram premises. The ashram adds to the sanctity of the entire environment. Amal Niyogi did much to organize the whole ashram since a decade with the help of some other brothers. Also, though his individual contribution is most praiseworthy. Another renowned ashram in the same state is situated in the universally known pilgrimage spot, Vrindavan Mathura. The ashram has been named Sri Sri Sham Rai Mandir. It is near Dhir Samir Kunj Banshivat, a playground of Sri Sri Bhagwan Krishna Chandra, namely the holy Yamuna River, flows beneath the ashram, adding immensely to the beauty and glory of the temple. The third important mat in the same state is of course Sri Sri Kashi Ram Ashram in the internationally famous city of Banaras or Varanasi. Here we see Lord Vishwanath presiding over. One may see here the grand marble image of Ram Parivar and listen to the continuous chanting of the Nam. And to crown all this is the marvelous sight of Holy River Ganga flowing just beneath the ashram, vibrant with the racy or slow boats plying on the river. Sri Sri Guru Shakti Ashram in Kota, Rajasthan is remarkable for the grand marble idols of Sri Sri Omkarnath and Sri Sri Radha Krishna. The flower garden with the green velvet appearance and the remarkable Chambal river flowing underneath enhance the beauty of the ashram a hundredfold. Rishikesh Ashram is the central mutt in the Himalayan range, which is a witness of so many divine plays of Sri Sri Karnat. It is here that most of his foreign disciples came in close contact with him, namely 
David Brain Fairley, a young English gentleman, Hank Barman of America, and Roishi Amanda, and Miss Annette Bagnan, Narayani of France, and most remarkable, Richard Boyley of Canada, also known as Krishnananda, and Daniel, who was named Mohanananda by Sri Sri Thakur. The historical meeting of Sri Sri Thakur with Gulzari Lal Nanda, the then Union Home Minister and a great devotee, Acharya Shama Shankar Dev, Sri Sri Param Guru Putra, Acharya Raghunath Dev, Sri Sri Guru Putra, B. N. Malik, the then Director CBI, Major General Sujan Singhavan, the architect of Bhagirati Math, are seen in the picture. Sri Sri Thakur's third grandson, Anath Bandhu, is seen at Rishikesh Ashram, surrounded by his companions belonging to his most favorite Nam Kirtan party. Ex-president of Delhi Jai Guru Sampradaya, Kinkar Durganandaji and Acharya Vasudevji are seen in the picture, busy in the worship of Sri Sri Vasanti Durga Mata at the Rishikesh Ashram. Here we see Kinkar Joy, Subroto Rai Chaudhari, in the youth conference at the Rishikesh Ashram. He is a great organizer of the Sangh and Rishikesh Ashram and Sri Sri Thakur's most favorite personal secretary and All India Trustee member. But despite his indispensable role, he likes to stay behind the curtain and as such rarely comes into picture. Here is Sri Sri Thakur at Bhagirati Mat Uttarkashi on the lap of his little mother, Mata Ragange Bhagirathi. Bhagirati Mat is the most favorite spiritual retreat of Sri Sri Thakur, so desolate and so remote. Sri Sri Gurudeva used to often utter Matar Ganga, Mother Ganga. He used to call Ganga of Uttarkashi, my little mother, Ganga of Rishikesh, my great mother. And in the lighter vein, with his characteristic wit, he called Ganga of Kolkata, my Jetima, as there are so many Jetis in Kolkata. As many as 75 ashrams all over India, from Jagannath Puri to Dwarka Puri, from the Himalayas to Kanyakumari, it would not be possible to show them all at the moment, but we must end with the most important facets of all India, Central Mat, Mahamilan, Calcutta, which is a 10-minute walk from Dakshineshwar Temple of Sri Bhagwan Ramakrishna Dev. The Mat was established in the year 1965 as the headquarter of the Sangha. Here we have the grand temple of Sham Sundar Sham Rani with eight playmates. Sri Sri Annapurnama with Sri Sri Mahadev and Sri Sri Mahavirji and Sri Sri Dakshina Kali in Sri Sri Thakur's bedroom. Here is the Omkarnath Auditorium with the grand temple of Sri Guru upstairs with beautiful temple in the entrance. This temple has an idol of Sri Sri Thakur. This icon is one of the best that you may get to see. The day begins with the ringing of the bells of the early morning Aarti at 4 a.m. in all the four temples simultaneously. A most divine experience and a feast to the eyes and ears. Constant chanting of the Naam is a permanent feature of worship here. This is only to be expected for such chanting is in keeping with the Omkarnath doctrine. There is also the morning procession of the devotees comprising laymen and women, children and monks of religious orders. From the Sham Sundar Sham Rani temple to Sri Sri Annapurna temple and back to the pavilion, Sri Umkarnath temple is indeed a divine sight. The morning worship, arati and prayer in the noon and evening need not be mentioned. The spiritual discourse with religious songs during the afternoon session is a special attraction for the local devotees, nor is the Sangha lagging behind in the field of multifarious welfare services to the ailing humanity. Sri Sri Omkarnath Seva Kendra is an instance in point. The local as well as outside patients visit the center which supplies almost all the facilities for good treatment including ENT department, X-ray, ECG department, pathology, a department for general treatment, all for a very nominal payment. 
Sri Ramesh or Dagaji. The treasurer of this Sangha is the chief architect of this Seva Kendra and the Umkarnath Auditorium at the Mahamilan Mat and renovation of Sri Ram Temple, birthplace of Sri Sri Thakur, namely Prana Krishna Mat, Kiyota. He is also a pioneer figure in many other fields of Sri Guru Seva, the author of brilliant works like Jai Raj Rajeshwari in Bengali and Yugautar Umkarnath in Hindi. He chronicled the life of Sri Thakur in a landmark audiovisual presentation titled Sri Sri Sitharam Leela Chitram. Here in Gurudham Ashram 36A, Garcha First Lane, Baliganj, the house of his most near and dear devotee, Kinkar Rameshwananda Ji, Rameshwar Daga, Sri Sri Thakur spent many days on good many occasions and sometimes in complete rest, sometimes in seclusion and meditation, sometimes on urgent missionary work. In fact, Gurudham Ashram is the historical place where Sri Sri Thakur himself designed the framework for the constitution of the Akhil Bharat Jai Guru Sangha Trust Board. In the picture, Sri Sri Thakur is seen with his most intimate devotees, Srimad Madhav Swamiji Maharas, Srimad Jivanananda Ji Maharas, Kinkar Vithal Ramanuja, etc. Sri Sri Thakur is engrossed in an intimate heart to heart talk with his dear devotees, especially Kinkar Rameshananda Ji, the householder. And here is Kinkar Jivananda. Kinkar Rabin Mishra is explaining the plans and program of the center. The Mahamilan Vidyapit established by Sri Sri Thakur has a very glorious tradition in the teaching of three arts, painting, singing and dancing. Vocational training includes training in carpentry. The entire educational activity is under the direction of the great intellectual Rishikesh Guha, Kinkar Amalananda Maharas. The present condition of the Vidyapit is not very encouraging, but Kinkar Amalanandaji, the director, is planning for its revival for a glorious future. His interest is keen and planning excellent, but there is a need for greater cooperation from elsewhere as well. Sanskrit education, including training in Vedic chanting, is the greatest contribution of the Sangha to the preservation of the heritage of Indian culture. The Sri Sri Sitaram Vaitik Mahavidyalaya has played and continues to play an important role in this field. The publication of the classic scriptures such as Sri Ramayana and Sri Mahabharata and the teachings of different sections of Sanskrit scriptures is the hallmark of this institution. Distinguished professors teach Sanskrit here. Sri Ram Ranjan Kapya Vyakran Tirtha a renowned Sanskrit scholar and a poet, as well as recipient of the President's Award, heads their department. Sri Sri Sitaram Dasam Karnath, Sanskrit Shiksha Sansad, and Sri Sitaram Vaidik Adarsha Sanskrit Mahavidyalay are the two great Sanskrit institutions which have achieved glory at the national and international level. In the spread of Sanskrit education, three internationally acclaimed intellectuals of Bengal, Dr. R. R. Mukherjee, Dr. D. N. Chakravarti, and Dr. Gopal Mitra, have made immense contribution. Other than the simple path of Harinam Sadhana, Sisi Thakul also preached and practiced almost all the branches of various spiritual schools. In his unique philosophical synthesis, he explained Karma Yoga Bhakti Yoga, Laya Yoga, Jnana Yoga, etc. He cited from all classical scriptures. He combined with these scriptural quotations the essence of his own personal experiences, his extensive spiritual writings dealing with various spiritual subjects include Sudhar Dhara, chanting of the name, Namamrit Lahari, Maharasayan, that is the great elixir and light and darkness. His preaching on Bhakti Yoga is to be found in Prapanna Pathik, Chokher Chalar Mayar Puja, Pushpa Chandan and in series of dramas such as Katha Ramayan, Vijane Vijaya, Milan Yadnya or Sri Ramchandra, Ramchor and Ashrubadal on Sri Bhagwan Krishna Chandra, Shiva Vivaha on Sri Sri 
शिवदुर्गा एंड नादिया नगर ऑन श्री भगवान चैतन्य महाप्रभु अदर प्लेस ऑफ ग्रेट इंपॉर्टेंस इंक्लूड भक्त लीला ऑन द डिवाइन लाइफ ऑफ ग्रेट सिंस तपस हबीब ऑन इस्लाम साधना गुरु पूजा ऑन रामानुजाचार्य ऑन योग एंड लय योगा विच इज योग ऑफ साउंड ही रोट योग रहस्य ऑन ज्ञान योगा ही रोट श्री श्री नाद लीला अमृत लहरी द ब्रिलियंट प्रणव पीयूष कमेंट्री ऑफ गीता एक्सपाउंडिंग द फिलोसफी ऑफ ओमकार ब्रह्मानुसंधान प्रपन्न पथिक एट्सेट्रा इन द मिड नाइट ऑफ सिक्स ऑफ डिसम्बर एट अबाउट वन थर्टी इन ए सिटिंग पोस्टर विच इज गेस्ट फिक्स अपर्ड्स श्री श्री सीताराम गॉड मैनिफेस्ट इन ह्यूमन फ्रॉम Included his mortal spot and merged with his inner essence in presence in Vaikuntha 107 Southern Avenue, Kolkata, in the house of his most dear devotee and reputed architect Sri Gopal Mitra. It is here that he had stayed for the last month of his divine life amid the incomparable services of Sri Gopal Mitra and his brothers. along with the other intimate devotees as well as prominent doctors attending on him all the time with much dedication this place now is the seat of sanskrit learning with the training of vedic chanting sat swara veda his sacred body was placed in sri ramashram at dumurdaha in the early dawn of 8th of december in the midst of namkirtan and vedic chants sung in the voice of thousands of disciples inundated with tears sita ram's mortal body mixed with the dust of sri ram ashram in sandalwood pyre some years ago while establishing the akhand naam kirtan dadi ashram sri ram ashram dumurdaho sita ram exclaimed with some rapture now let there be an end here for it is verily from here that the journey had begun Karnak movement is a name of a spiritual movement that has had its beginnings somewhere in the hoary past of ancient India. Today it is an international movement. The great saints and sages of India in the Himalayas and the Vindhya mountain ranges nurtured and preserved the Sanatan dharma, eternal religion. The precious knowledge garnered by them was handed down generation after generation. intersely worded sutras or principles disciples learned and practiced the required disciplines imbibed realized and then propagated the spiritual beliefs through time their enlightenment has served as living proof of the great truths contained in the hindu philosophy which are of universal appeal irrespective of caste creed faith or nationality in the present age this movement received a fresh momentum from the great incarnation of god sri sri sitaram das from karnat what one might ask is the amkarnat movement is it a journey towards omkar the supreme godhead or is it a journey guided by omkarnat well it is both and therefore journey that holds much promise this movement is a journey of the spirit a pilgrimage that is most festive What is the goal of this pilgrimage? This pilgrimage must lead one to a state that can only be described as an eternal festival, replete as this state is with delightful spiritual experiences. One may approach it in a spirit of celebration. The eternal festival is a concomitant of God's realization. It is a condition characterized by bliss and peace. Srimad Bhagavatam renders an apt description of this eternal festival. Tadevaramyam ruchiram navam navam Tadeva shaswat manaso mahotsav Tadeva shokar navashoshanam narimam Yaduttamam shloka yashah anugiyate Srimad Bhagavatam 12th chapter 12th part 49 words What do these words mean? They mean 
Only the words and thoughts that bespeak the glory of God lead us to the eternal festival of the mind and soak thereby the entire sea of human grief. Tadeva Shaswat Manaso Mahotsavam translates as that is the grand eternal festival for the mind. Sri Sri Param Guru Dev Dashrati Dev Yogeshwara took the divine vow in an ecstatic moment. I shall go from door to door and preach the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. I shall even go to the foreign lands and declare there the glory of the chanting of the name. Sri Sri Thakur also had direct command from Lord Jagannath, go, go and preach the name. In the very core of his heart, there was a conscious, deep-rooted desire to fulfill the divine will of his master in this world. Either go to the foreign land or send his message there for the divine cause. Sri Sri Thakur passed away. By this time much water has flown over the Ganges. In Omkareshwar, in the very place under the Bilva tree, where Sri Sri Sitaram Das Omkarnath communed with God in 2003, during the period when Sri Sri Vithal Ramanuja was penning the spiritual classic, the eternal festival, in his meditation arose the divine resolve to take Sri Sri Thakur's unique and universal message to the West. Sri Vithal Maharaj, an adept in spiritual and academic learning, a scholar and great renunciate, brings to the world the life and teachings of Namautar, Sri Sitaram Das Samkarnath. He is the present president of the Sampradaya, founded by the Master. He is not only a close blood relative of Sri Sitaram Das Samkarnath, but also linked to him as a companion in religious austerity. He has chronicled in fine detail all the significant events of his preceptor's life. In these pages, a product of his constant contemplation and literary devotion, Sri Vithar Ramanuja paid a tribute to his guru. This work was originally penned and published in Bengali. It bears the most enduring name, Navanavo Rupe Eso. The meaning of this title is, Come in ever new forms. Today it is available in Hindi as Chittaka Nitya Mahotsav and in English as the Eternal Festival. Sri Vithal Maharaj is a very good singer and has a voice possessing breadth and a transcendental quality. The highlight of his musicianship is his singing of the Naam, Hare Krishna Mahamad. He has cast the Naam or the Tarak Brahma of 16 words in innumerable tunes. He has explored the notes of various ragas by weaving them around the Naam. In these musical outpourings, there are flashes of inspired genius. His religious music includes works such as Sri Sri Namamrit Lahiri, Omkar Geet Arghya, Bina Sitaram Gaha Shanti Dham, Pile Hari Naam Ka Pyala, which is a Hari Krishna, Mahamatra Sankirtan, and Sita Ram Maha Sindhu Tire, Bengali Bhajan. Oh, <laughs> 
Sri Vithal Ramanuja often addresses gatherings of Baba Omkarnath's devotees. His discourses carry the weight of serious philosophical import gracefully and lightly. Gurudeva, can I ask you a few questions on behalf of the seekers? First question, how do we, how do we overcome distractions? Distraction. Now Sankirtan is the best way. Because when we are so much busy with the outer world, when we get puzzled, only Nam Sankirtan can take us away from the outer world and solve to some extent. The Umkarnath movement has begun in several quarters. The fact that the West needs it as much as the East or perhaps more is borne out by the recent letter from King Krishnananda. Mr. Richard Boyley of Canada, the great Western devotee of Sri Sri Thakur, to Kinkar Vichal Ramanuja with the earnest prayer to visit the West, to preach the Nam, as well as the divine life and the message of Sri Bhagwan Omkar Nath Dev. Here is an abridged version of that letter. Sri Sri Gurubhai Namaha, Jaya Sitaram, Om, Chertsi, Quebec, Canada, 11th October, 2005 Purnima Sri Sri Kinkar Vichal Ramanuja The embodiment of my master Please be kind enough to accept thousand pranams at your feet Also accept love from a useless brother disciple from the other side of the world I have received your book your compassion and blessings I have read the eternal festival the most beautiful thing I have ever read in my life this book of yours has got me to shed tears, monsoon of tears, the flowing of love towards Sri Baba, towards Dharma, the Shastras, the Nam. So much love I have for all of you, so much respect. How great is God and His Bhakta! How supremely lucky I am to have witnessed the Lord of my heart in His Leela with His followers. So much delight in reading your book, so much thanks. I'm so grateful to you, brother. Amazing book, amazing disciple you are, amazing grace from you. Jai Guru. I'm reminded of the great Swami Vivekananda. He used to say, if you work for your own salvation, you will go to hell. You have to work for salvation of others, even if you have to go to hell. Coming to the West is a bit like going to hell. Worldly, materialistic people, pygmy in spiritual matters. Money, power, sex, violence and so on. But somehow, someone has to take the plunge, just like Swami Vivekananda or Swami Yoga, Yogananda Paramahasa or Prabhupada, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami. Even Param Guru Deva, Sri Siddhashat Dev Yogeshwar, wanted to go there and spread Nam. Nobody is more qualified than you. I would say that my, yourself. By God's will, it seems time has come. It would be nice if you would come to this Sri Baba's place, grace it with your presence. Give it a name and bless this place so that it can become an ashram where any devotee of Sri Sri Thakur may come and do sadhana here. I have already brought sand from Sri Rishikesh Ashram, from Banaras, from Vrindavan, Radha Kunda, Gokul, Barsana, Govardhan, Hardwar, etc. and water from Ganga, Jamuna, etc. And I have mixed the sand with everything around the house and the land and the holy water with the lake here. So just below the house, the lake Ganga is there. I have made puja, renamed the house, renamed the lake Ganga and decorated the house like an Indian ashram with photos of Radha Krishna, Sita Ram, Mahadev, Durga, Kali and so on. I bathe in the Ganga three, four times a day with Krishna Nam on my lips, listen to your cassette Nam Amrit Lahari with tears always. I curse my bad luck as to why Babaji kicked me from India to this demonic country full of poison, Rajas. In Kanyakumari, Baba told me that birth after birth I was his disciple and took birth always in India. But then why this birth in the West? The answer came from Baba as a letter. He wrote to me then on 12th of May 1982, My son Krishnananda, there are two types of men in this world. One type feeds his own self, the other type feeds others as well. 
Sri Guru Deva has brought you to feed others. You have been born outside India, particularly you will have to feed people of those places with the spiritual food and to lead them to the path of peace, to the path of eternal light. You yourself will have to do nothing. You are only to watch and Sri Guru Deva's Leela. Do not forget even for a moment that you are the instrument only. You are the flute in the hands of Lord Christ Sri Krishna. With this in mind, from here in this Tapovan, gifted by Sri Guru Deva, I have a dream. We intoxicate the Western world with Sitaram life, Sitaram's life and teaching and preaching. My dearest Maharaj, you have been trained by God Sitaram himself to do such a work. You know everything, lecturing, music, cooking, you are enlightened. So you can also light the lamps of thousands and more. May God bless you. All glory to our Sitaram. With lots of gratitude to you, Maharaj, viewers, Kinkar Krishnananda of Sitaram, Richard Boyley, Canada. Sri Vithar Ramanuja, the president of the order, Akhil Bharat Jai Guru Sampraday, looks after the ashrams all over India in consultation with all other trustees. He is also organizing the preaching of Hare Krishna Mahamantra in different states, which is undoubtedly the quintessence of Amkarnath movement. <laughs> 